Uh, today we'll be talking about ventilating or ventilation. Now, in ventilator, basically we have two modes or two things. First one is it can be a controlled ventilation or it can be assisted or supportive ventilation. So what is the meaning of control and what is the meaning of support? Control means we have the control over everything of the ventilation. Means we will be having control of respiratory rate. What should be the respiratory rate? We will be having the control on inspiratory time because these things are very, very important. So basically, whenever we are talking about a controlled ventilation, it means we will be having the control or we can set the respiratory rate. We can set the T inspiratory or inspiratory time. So we can control either the tidal volume or we can control the pressure support that we are going to give. Because most of the time what we need to know, we can <coughs> either set a tidal volume that is the uh, uh, volume of air that we push into patient's lungs every breath so we can decide key per breath what should be the amount of air the patient should receive that is called tidal volume or we can simply set the pressure that what should be the pressure that should be delivered to a patient whenever we are ventilating the patient so why this is important because we must know that any person any patient who is dysnic who has shortness of breath or who has low oxygen level or whose respiratory rate is very high who is tachypneic they need ventilatory support otherwise they can simply die they can simply worsen now why this respiratory support or ventilatory support is necessary the funda is very simple. If someone is tachypneic, if someone RR, which is normally should be around 12 to 18 per minute in an adult person, if they are suppose uh, very much tachypneic, if their respiratory rate is like suppose 30, 32, 34, what does this mean? Usually, normally, diaphragm, which is the muscle of respiration, utilizes less than 10 percent of the cardiac output that that is it will utilize around 300 200 ml of blood but whenever anyone who is tachypneic a large amount of blood is basically transferred or shifted from muscles from liver from bones to all the kind of unessential organs and this blood is shifted towards the diaphragm so anyone who is tachypneic, the diaphragm can utilize up to 80% of the cardiac output. So if only diaphragm is utilizing that much of amount of huge amount of cardiac output, then what the heart is going to get, what the lungs are going to get, what the kidneys are going to get. And in short, these organs will again fail very fast. Hence, supporting diaphragm is very, very, very essential. Now, uh, what we usually always do, the uh, tidal volume, setting tidal volume is very necessary. Tidal volume is the amount of uh, air that we give per breath. So any person, any patient nowadays, we uh, we ventilate the patient with, we can ventilate from 6 to 12 ml per kg per minute. So this can be set. So 6 to 12 6 ml is called low tidal volume and 12 is ca called high tidal volume so if tidal volume is high it will simply increase the uh, length or the diameter of the alveoli so the alveoli will be much more inflated if we use 12 ml per kg tidal volume so what we need to understand ki, uh, usually 6 ml per kg this tidal volume whenever we whenever we use this will not over distend the alveoli and this can maintain the sufficient amount of saturation of oxygen or po2 that is partial pressure of oxygen in the blood so what our target is usually 
99%. What is the normal saturation of oxygen is 99%. If the patient has COPD or severe restrictive disease, then we can target saturation target of 91%, which is fair enough. So what we always do is we focus the tidal volume and we calculate the, that on the basis of 6 ml per kg. So if the weight of the patient is around 70 kg, we set tidal volume of 420 ml. So this is VT, that is tidal volume. This can be increased from this to this. So uh, depending on weight, we decide ki how much tidal volume should be given. So basically there are two modes. This is uh, whenever we are talking about controlled mode. So we will control everything. We will con control the respiratory rate. We will be continue the in uh, con, uh, control the inspiratory time. This inspiratory time is very very important. Why? I'll come to that uh, very very uh, soon. So uh, this F is basically RR. F is frequency of respiration means respiratory rate. So in this case we have put this as 18. Now we have set tidal volume of 280 because this was basically a child. But uh, this tidal volume, we always set on the basis of weight of the patient. If the weight is 70, we put tidal, we can put the tidal volume from 6 ml per kg. So if weight is 70, then 70 into 6, that is 420 ml. This, is, this, this should be tidal volume. We can increase if the patient is obese or if the saturation is not getting maintained. If it is significantly lower, the target should be at least 91%. 99 is desirable. But if the lung compliance is very bad, then in fact getting 91% can also be very much difficult at many instances. So uh, when we are talking about controlling patient's respiratory rate and controlling everything of respiration, of the patient we have two choices either we can control uh, the tidal volume we can set the patient on tidal volume what we call it as volume control mode so this is called volume control where we are setting the tidal volume and the second mode is pressure control mode where we are not actually setting the tidal volume but we are setting the pressure key how much pressure should be given to the patient's lungs so i'll come to both of these very soon now uh, the important thing is keep maximum time uh, most of the time maximum centers prefer tidal volume because it is very very easy to calculate it is and it is pretty decent and pretty effective method so anyone coming with shortness of breath uh, increased rr what you do you set a tidal volume according to the weight of the patient so this is the tidal volume which is 6 ml per kg now initially means as the patient comes with low oxygen level low saturation low po2 then initially to uh, bring his saturation to as fast as possible to 99 percent we can set this fio2 this o2 is fio2 that is fractional fraction of oxygen into the air that we are giving to the patient we set to 100 percent now we must know that whatever oxygen we are taking i am taking we are only taking 21 percent of oxygen because we know the air has around only 21 percent of oxygen so we give this much of concentrated air so is it a problem yes it is a problem we must know that normal air that we are breathing air is mainly composed of nitrogen almost 70 percent is nitrogen 21 percent is oxygen so if this nitrogen is a non-diffusible uh, air particle or air part means the alveoli the, whenever the air comes in the 70 percent the the air that is coming the 70 percent is nitrogen so it won't diffuse out of the alveoli so it will it will basically occupy it will keep this alveoli patent but what happens if oxygen comes in oxygen comes in and it will simply get diffused into into the blood vessels so nothing will remain here 
and this alveoli will collapse this is what we call it as atelectasis so to have oxygen transfer this must be patent but here what has happened this alveoli is completely collapsed because this is completely made up of oxygen that is the reason why anytime whenever we want to uh, settle down patients oxygenation to optimal level to 100 percent initially until the patient is not settled until the patient is tachypneic until the patient's rr is high we give a fio2 of 100 percent and as soon as possible as soon as the patient settles maybe in an hour or two hours or three hours we keep producing this fio2 from 100 to 80 then 80 to 70 then 60 then 50 then 40 then 30 so if patients uh, uh, if the fio2 is 30 percent and if his saturation is maintaining well then that is fair enough because the chances of atelectasis the chances of collapse of the alveoli will be markedly lesser so now we have seen the tidal volume that we can put like 6 ml per kg or 7 ml per kg or 8 ml per kg but most of the time 6 ml per kg suffices and 6 ml per kg is descent fio2 we just spoke now what about this t inspiratory time and f now we need to understand uh, the t inspiration and f these are very 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 important now the thing is uh, whenever patients come uh, what in any abg we see is we see ph we see pco2 and we see po2 so po2 is partial pressure of oxygen into the blood if it is around 70 percent then the saturation will be around 91 percent so this po2 has to be 70 percent and uh, what is this pco2 pco2 is simply partial pressure of carbon dioxide so the normal level of pco2 is from 35 to 45 now one of the most important problem in uh, this respiratory failure is this pco2 uh, is between the PCO2 has to be in between 35 to 45 but in type 2 respiratory failure this increases it can go up to 70 80 90 100 so whenever this PCO2 will rise this high PCO2 will be termed as type 2 respiratory failure it will cause respiratory acidemia so it will cause markedly acidic blood so ph can be 6.9 ph can be 7 ph can be 7.1 whenever there is acidemia whenever there is co2 retention patients will start sleeping patient will be very much drowsy what we call it as co2 narcosis and uh, this co2 retention is very characteristic features of co2 retention are patients will be very much drowsy patients will have respiratory acidemia ph will be much much less than 7.35 this acidemia will cause hypo it can, it can call hypotension as well but very typical feature of usually co2 narcosis is tachycardia and hypertension so tachycardia and hypertension these things are very much commonly seen with co2 narcosis and these patients can die because of this and if patients collapse then it is very difficult to uh, make them out of that condition so there this f and uh, that is f is respiratory rate and this t inspiration is inspiratory time so what we need to know is the ins i by e ratio that is inspiratory to expiratory ratio now we know that this has to be at least one as to two then only it what is the meaning of this i by e is e i is inspiratory time e is expiratory time so patient must get time to do expiration otherwise co2 will not be washed off so normally it has to be kept uh, more than one as to two if we are looking for co2 wash out so just we'll have the calculation here so just imagine that the uh, f is not 18 f is suppose 20 that is 20 is the respiratory rate 
and T inspiratory is 1.2 second. So if respiratory rate is 20, it means every 60 seconds, patient will take 20 breaths, means each cycle, one cycle will be of 3 seconds. It means out of this 3 seconds, 1.2 will be inspiratory cycle. Inspiratory time, it means ki expiratory will be, expiratory time will be automatically 3 seconds minus 1.2, that is 1.8 second. So, I is 1.2 and expiratory time is 1.8. It means ki this is uh, the I by E is not 1 as to 2, but it is 1 as to 1.5. It means the patient will get less time for expiration. So the chances of CO2 retention will be very much higher. Now this I by E comes into very much picture when we are considering the PO2 that is uh, sorry PCO2 as well as PO2 means PCO2 means uh, CO2 and PO2 means the saturation of oxygen. So uh, what we need to make sure is patient's PCO2 must be maintained between 35 to 45. If it is increasing, if it is becoming more than 45, and if you want to drag it down, then what you can do is you can simply reduce the inspiratory time. Inspiratory time can be reduced, so automatically the expiratory time can be higher, and patient can get more time for expiration. For example, in earlier uh, example, what we saw, if we suppose the RR is FF, RR is equal to FF is 20, and if T inspiratory time is 1.2 second. So here the patient is having 1.2 inspiratory time and 1.8 second as expiratory time. If PCO2 on this setting has increased, then what we can do to settle down the PCO2 is we can simply reduce the inspiratory time from 1.2 second to 1 second only. So automatically the expiratory time will be 2 second. So then patient will get more time for CO2 washout and the CO2 can get better. So at this point what we need to say is as we are reducing the inspiratory time the saturation of oxygen must be maintained. Because the T inspiratory is very much important, we must get sufficient amount of time to give inspiration to the patient, to give inspiratory air to inspiratory oxygen, so that the saturation of oxygen must be maintained. So if saturation of oxygen, if it is falling less than 91%, then to settle it down, you can increase the FiO2. So if FiO2 is like 50%, 60%, you can increase it if it is needed to give more oxygen so that the saturation of oxygen has to be 90 percent so in short what we need to understand is uh, the inspiratory as to expiratory triumph we can make it one uh, we can increase it to more than 1.2 if you are looking for co2 wash out and uh, to have optimal saturation of oxygen you can manipulate this you can increase the inspiratory time but you have to make sure that the co2 is at bay co2 is not increasing more than 45 millimeters and uh, to increase the saturation you can increase the fio2 as well or t inspiratory time as well so it all comes to the saturation as well as the PC2 levels. Uh, one of the most important thing, apart from this, what we can do is PEEP. Because PEEP is the peak end expiratory pressure. PEEP is very important. So PEEP is simply whenever this alveolis are basically at the end expiration, so when the patient has done expiration, at the end of expiration, what is the pressure here that is called PEEP. So PEEP decides whether this alveoli remains open or not. 
so whenever there is significant alveolar damage like suppose in ARDS there will be significant temperament in the alveoli so that the alveoli will uh, be collapsing alveoli will collapse so basically to prevent the alveolar collapse you need to have a higher peep so that this alveoli won't close or won't rupture block so in that scenario you can increase the peep level to achieve more and more oxygenation but it can also increase pco2 normally to any person whose lungs are okay whose lungs are not extensively damaged the peep which is set is always five so most of the patients most of the patients the peep is set to five and if the lungs compliance is very poor suppose if the patient has ARDS if the patient has extensive uh, lung damage then the peep can be increased to five six seven eight nine up to ten also the peep can be set but uh, more than ten usually it in significantly increase the risk of rupture of the alveoli so this is all about today's talk we'll again meet in the next topic